Hey guys, it's Felix, and in today's video, we are going to talk about the media industry oligopoly. The media industry is an oligopoly, given the fact that there are a certain group of companies that have tremendous influence over entertainment, sports, and news media. The five main companies that have tremendous influence in our media and technology markets include AT&T, Comcast, the Walt Disney Company, National Amusements, along with News Corp and Fox Corporation, which I will consider one company because they are connected by Rupert Murdoch, the very wealthy billionaire that owns both companies. Before we get started, I'd really appreciate if you could like and subscribe if you enjoy this video. And now let's go through each one of those companies and look at what assets they hold. When you first hear of AT&T, you probably think of it as a service provider. I know that I use them for my phone, and while it's not always the best service, it's not like I have too many options, and it certainly is adequate and gets the job done. But in 2018, a deal went through where AT&T purchased Time Warner, which has now been renamed as Warner Media. For those of you who don't know, Warner is a massive media company with different assets that itself runs. First of all, some of the largest cable TV brands have now been acquired by AT&T through Warner like the infamous CNN News Network, TNT, Cartoon Network, and TBS, all large channels with a diverse offering of news, sports, and entertainment shows for all ages and audiences. On top of that, Turner Sports has many media holdings and websites, like the popular app Bleacher Report, NBA.com, PGA.com, NCAA.com, and NBA TV. Another huge part of Warner's business is HBO. Almost everyone knows what HBO is. It's a streaming service that owns many popular shows like Game of Thrones, for example. On top of that, Warner also consists of many smaller aspects, like DC Entertainment, the home of superheroes like Superman, The Flash, and Wonder Woman, as well as New Line Cinema, which produced Lord of the Rings, among other movies and shows. Along with all of these acquisitions from Warner, AT&T also owns DirecTV, which has the lion's share of the satellite TV market. We're only one company through, but you can already see the tremendous influence that these media companies have. They have power over everything from our network connection, to the news that informs us, to the sports that brings us excitement, to the movies that bring us entertainment. But I'll save my larger conclusions for the end of the video. Next, we'll talk about Comcast. Being from the Philadelphia area, I have seen the impact that a company like Comcast has. They're quite let's say notorious, and not particularly well received in the area. But you can see their influence from the names of the tallest buildings in the city to our sports venues. Comcast owns Xfinity, which is a massive cable TV provider. Other than owning Xfinity, Comcast's most notable asset is probably NBC Universal. NBC Universal is super, super powerful. Obviously, the NBC channel has been a staple in news, entertainment, and sports coverage, and building off of this, they own NBC Sports for sports specific content, MSNBC for news, and CNBC as one of the premier business and finance news channels in the world. Furthermore, they have entertainment channels like Sci Fi, E, and Bravo, among others. They also own the most prominent Spanish-speaking American television network in Telemundo. Continuing on, the second part of NBC Universal is Universal, one of the largest film studios in the world known for movies like Jaws, Jurassic Park, E.T., The Fast and the Furious series, among thousands of other noteworthy films. Universal also owns DreamWorks Animation, Illumination, and Universal Animation Studios, which all have created their own very popular works as well. And finally, you can't mention Universal without the Universal Parks and Resorts as well, which have been very successful in their own right. Recently, the NBC Universal Group has also launched the streaming service Peacock, which, while a little bit slow to get started, does have the rights to some very popular content like the sitcom The Office. While I want to keep this video more about the US, it's impossible to mention that Comcast also owns Sky Group, which is one of the largest news and sports media companies in Europe, especially Great Britain, with over 53 million subscribers on that continent. As you can see, Comcast truly has some incredible influence around the world. Now, what about the Walt Disney Company? Mickey Mouse couldn't be an ultra-capitalistic rodent, could he? Let's get the obvious out of the way. 
Disney has tremendous influence through the Walt Disney Studios. Walt Disney Studios has created some of the most iconic movies in the history of film, like Pinocchio, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, The Little Mermaid, The Lion King, and Beauty and the Beast. Along with their animation studios, Disney also owns Pixar, which itself has many movies of my childhood, like WALL-E, Cars, Toy Story, and Finding Nemo. More recently, that studio has taken larger steps towards telling unique stories through pictures like Soul and Coco, which have both been very popular. But outside of animation, Marvel Studios has to be one of the biggest Disney companies. These are movies of my generation featuring irreplaceable characters like Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, all seen in the highest grossing film in history, Avengers Endgame, and The Scarlet Witch. Speaking of which, Disney owns their own streaming service, Disney Plus, which has produced the critically acclaimed show WandaVision featuring The Scarlet Witch. But Disney couldn't be content with just one streaming service. They also own ESPN Plus and part of Hulu, which both are very popular streaming services. Another popular Disney Plus show is The Mandalorian, which brings me back on track by telling you that Disney also owns Lucasfilm, which obviously was George Lucas's gift to the world in the form of Star Wars. Outside of the world of film, Disney holds many assets as well. As I mentioned before, Disney owns ESPN, which is one of the largest sporting television networks, and National Geographic, which is obviously a major player in the nature and travel television market. Disney also owns the ABC network, which is also a huge player in entertainment and news. Recently, Disney acquired 21st Century Fox for $71 billion, aka the entertainment division of one of the largest media companies in the world, one that we'll get to soon. It's one of the weird quirks of the media industry where companies are constantly buying and selling different assets. It's always between the major players in the industry though, and therefore doesn't lead to any major shifts in how things play out. Don't get 21st Century Fox confused with Fox News, as the news channel along with business and sports were reorganized into the Fox Corporation, separate from 21st Century Fox. However, what Disney did gain was 20th Century Fox, renamed as 20th Century Studios, which includes all the film and television that Fox has put out and will continue to put out. It's certainly very confusing, but all you need to know is that 20th Century Fox is one of the biggest players in the entertainment market. Moving along, the next company that we're going to talk about is National Amusements. National Amusements is an interesting company because a large part of its business and where it got started is actually in movie theaters. National Amusements operates 1,500 theaters, including the brands Showcase, Multiplex, Cinema Deluxe, and Kinostar throughout the US, UK, Latin America, and Russia. But in regards to media companies, like many of the others on this list, National Amusements has a huge presence in Viacom CBS. This new iteration of Viacom CBS was only created when the two companies re-merged in December of 2019 after being split apart for 13 years. Of course, one of the largest aspects of Viacom CBS is in its name. The CBS network has been known as a premier site for news, entertainment, and sports television. Along with local CBS stations and CBS sports, this classic cable brand has a very widespread reach in American households. Viacom CBS also owns many entertainment TV networks, including MTV, Nickelodeon, Bet, and Comedy Central, among others. Not all of these networks have seen high success in recent years, although many have still been able to do well and adapt their content to the modern viewer. Outside of television, the other major component of Viacom CBS is Paramount. Paramount is the second oldest film studio in the US and the only large studio that remains located inside of the city limits of Los Angeles. Paramount Studios distributed the iconic movie Titanic, along with other modern series like Transformers, Forrest Gump, and Shrek. Viacom CBS also runs the new streaming service Paramount Plus, their own service similar to the others of the companies that we've already discussed. And while Paramount Plus is relatively small as compared to the other services, it still sports many millions of US customers. Finally, let's discuss the two companies that the man Rupert Murdoch, or should I say the $23.7 billion man Rupert Murdoch owns. 
Now, technically, Murdoch has two separate companies in News Corp and Fox Corporation. These two companies were split from an original company, also creatively named News Corporation, in 2013 for purposes of what he described as unlocking greater long-term shareholder value. The new News Corporation is the publishing side of the company, with assets in multiple parts of the world. Murdoch, who is from Australia and started his business there, still has multiple newspapers and real estate platforms based in Australia and the UK, but the most prominent asset to us Americans would be Dow Jones and Company, responsible for the financial-focused Wall Street Journal, the popular Market Watch website, and the Barron's Magazine, which once again is focused on finances and the stock market. News Corp also owns the New York Post, which is a prominent newspaper and online news site that typically leans conservative on news issues. Furthermore, the company also owns HarperCollins, the third largest book publisher in the world. Most people with books lying around their home will find that many of them are published by HarperCollins. Murdoch's other huge media enterprise is in Fox Corporation, previously 21st Century Fox. As we've detailed before, most of Fox's entertainment assets were sold and transferred to Disney, and the remaining news and sports content moved to the new Fox Corporation. Fox Corporation is the home of the infamous Fox News Network, along with Fox Business, which is similar to CNBC, focusing on markets and economic developments. The other major part of Fox is their sports media, with companies like FS1, FS2, Big Ten Network, among others. Their flagship football content is often seen on the main Fox channel as well. As you can see, even though a large part of Fox is gone, it still has tremendous influence and audience, along with a variety of content. Add that with the publishing and newspaper prowess that News Corp possesses, and you can clearly see the influence that Murdoch and his companies have in the media industry. In this video, we didn't even touch on some of the other massive media companies like Verizon, which has recently acquired Yahoo, or newspaper and news website companies like Gannett, which runs all of USA Today media, and Hearst, which owns magazines and websites in nearly every imaginable category like food, lifestyle, sports, and travel. We also haven't discussed companies like Netflix, which has risen to the fourth largest media company through just subscriptions, or Alphabet, the parent company of Google, which has tremendous media influence itself, or social media sites like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Those topics would all be very interesting to examine. However, I wanted to focus more on the traditional concept of media companies that have a wide portfolio of assets and whose influence has proliferated all aspects of our American lives, including news, sports, and entertainment. By this point, you might wonder what the major problems with having this massive media conglomerates are. Let's start by addressing the media and its connection to the people. The media should be present there to inform, support, and entertain the public. Right now, these companies have so much money and influence that they are more connected to the political insiders and businessmen of Wall Street. This can lead to certain agendas being pushed, underlying motives, money corrupting the industry, and other types of trouble. Another huge issue with this oligopoly is a lack of diverse viewpoints. Because these five companies have tremendous power on cable news, a lot of the viewers are often not exposed to all sides of an argument, or at least an accurate representation of all sides of an argument. Naturally, you could see why this could be problematic, especially if people enter a type of echo chamber where they only get their information from one, possibly very flawed media source. Obviously, the biggest problem that we've yet to discuss is the profit motive. In this deregulated media market, companies are always out to make more money. This means dirty tactics, surprising mergers, and acquisition or creation of new assets. This means trying to scratch every last penny out of customers. This is why net neutrality was such a hot button topic a few years ago, and will probably continue to be discussed in the future. What will happen when your internet provider, your online magazine subscription, the movie you watch at the theater, your entertainment streaming service, the sports you enjoy on television, and the news channel you watch to stay informed are all controlled by the same company? That is the question that we are already facing, and that we will continue to face in the future. So what is the solution to this media oligopoly at the top? In the end, the best way to combat the media oligopoly is to support small and local, just like with other types of businesses. Try to consume from local news as often as possible. 
While it's sometimes inconvenient that these newspapers and websites have paywalls, this typically returns for higher journalistic integrity, news about your own community, and in the end, you're supporting your local economy. When it comes to things like films, support small creators. There are a lot of great individuals who make indie films or have a side passion project. But just because these movies or films might be on a lower budget doesn't mean that they aren't valuable and tell unique stories. For traditional cable news, remember that there are alternatives, like independent creators on YouTube. But beware, as lies and conspiracies can spread much faster on social media, and that is something that comes from all sides of the political spectrum, so make sure to fact check from multiple sources. And like I mentioned before, sometimes reading news is more informative than watching two so-called pundits bicker on television. After all, remember that their motive is profit, and whatever will drive up that number is what will drive their content. But in the end, while this oligopoly is a troubling situation, remember that just because a company has a lot of power doesn't automatically make them bad. Now certainly, companies like Disney and Fox are not benevolent organizations, but they can put out some good and valuable content. And you have to remember that these companies are massive employers and drivers of the economy. American families do rely on these organizations for both their information, entertainment, but most importantly, jobs. What do you think about these massive media conglomerates? Are they an evil force that needs to be stopped? Or do you believe that they make life easier and streamline our online and television experience? Or perhaps are you neutral on the subject and believe that this is just the way that society should and will work? I'd love to hear all your thoughts about this in the comments. If you found this video entertaining or informative, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe for more content like this. As always, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.